to Noor O'Day. She's a political analyst and joins me from Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. Uh, Noor, uh, let me begin with what we saw in this um, hospital. Um, how unusual is it for Israeli special forces in disguise with weapons in their arms, open fire inside a hospital, not in Gaza, but in the West Bank where you are. Well, it's, thank you for having me, Asiya. This is the most recent brazen attack against the Palestinian hospital in the West Bank by Israeli forces. But we, we have seen at least three uh, such assassinations uh, inside hospitals in the West Bank over the past few years, none uh, as brazen as this one. And certainly, uh, you know, you're talking about a man who has been receiving treatment and operations. He was, uh, since uh, since the end of October, he was incapacitated. He was in the rehabilitation ward of the hospital. His brother and the other man with him were accompanying him to help him uh, because he could not uh, assist himself in, in any uh, daily task. The, uh, and you know what the Israelis are saying, right, Noor? They're saying the three right. Palestinians they killed were using the hospital as a base to plan more attacks. <laughs> they say Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad have already claimed the trio as members. Well, they are, they are members. Nobody's disputing that they are members of armed groups, but they were unarmed. This man was seriously injured by a previous attempt on his life by Israeli forces at the end of October. They were unarmed. There were no clashes. They were executed through gunshot heads, uh, uh, to, through gunshots to the head. Uh, that we can corroborate from images of the bodies uh, after the attack. This is an assassination, an execution, uh, and it is illegal and it is criminal under any uh, circumstance. And so it is impossible to justify it or to excuse it, certainly not for Palestinians and certainly not for people who care much about international law and the fact that hospitals are protected buildings. You cannot raid a hospital and kill someone uh, inside the hospital receiving treatment unarmed as a civilian, even if they belong to a group that you are targeting. Uh, let me talk about the overall situation um, in the West Bank. According to the United Nations, and our reporter just mentioned it as well, some 380 Palestinians, including 94 children, have been killed across the West Bank since October 7th, the vast majority by Israeli mm -hmm. forces. Um, meanwhile, attacks by armed Israeli settlers on Palestinians have reached yeah. an alarming level. Uh, Noor, what is going on? And have the events in Gaza and Israel's siege perhaps emboldened these attacks and what the settlers are doing? Well, certainly this government, uh, as soon as it came to power, even long before this war started, announced a program that was basically a, a, an announcement of war on Palestinians uh, focused on the West Bank. And that's why over the past year we saw record numbers, uh, uh, numbers that the UN hasn't seen in over uh, 15 years of how many, the number of Palestinians killed, the number of homes demolished, the number of territory annexed. This is a government committed to the annexation of Palestinian land, the dispossession of Palestinians, and to uh, making sure that even the dream of Palestinian statehood, as Netanyahu put it many months back, would be crushed. So at the moment, using the fog of war in Gaza, Netanyahu and his government, after having passed on thousands of weapons to Israeli settlers, are basically riding a bulldozer and pushing the situation in the West Bank, pushing Palestinians to the edge of a cliff, uh, knowing full well that all of these nightly raids, all of this destruction and all of these killings would tip things off uh, to uh, a further deterioration. Um, this is a comfortable place for Netanyahu and his government where they can claim that they are defending uh, Israel and its occupation project, where they can stay in power and fight for another day so long as the lives lost are Palestinian and they maintain power. Let me also get to allegations facing some very serious explosive allegations facing more mm -hmm. than a dozen staffers from UNRWA, the largest humanitarian relief body in Gaza. 
Um, Israel has accused them of playing a very critical role in the Hamas-led attacks of October 7 that killed over 1,200 Israelis. At least 10 countries have suspended yeah. funding for the agency. Nor what is going to be the impact of these funding cuts? Um, the timing of it. I mean, Gaza is already in a dire, not even dire, catastrophic situation right now. Right. The, the implications would be seismic. Uh, but let's take a step back. These allegations, which have yet to be corroborated, which are only uh, advanced by Israel, are uh, against 12 uh, uh, UNRWA employees. UNRWA, of course, employs more than 30,000 people. So this is a negligible number. They claim that at least some of them may have been involved in the October 7 attack, that others may have expressed supporting views on social media. None of that information was shared uh, with UNRWA. But I believe the 12 um, were already fired. Am I correct? Yeah, well, at least nine were already fired. We heard from UNRWA that at least one has already been killed uh, in the war on Gaza. And they were terminated even before these allegations could be proven. An independent investigation uh, in the United Nations is underway. And like I said, we have not seen any corroboration of these allegations. And it's very interesting to see how coordinated this, these announcements from countries uh, about cutting off funding, because they coincided with the ruling from the ICJ that said that there was credible evidence, there was plausible evidence that Israel was committing genocide in Gaza. And it ordered with immediate effect that humanitarian aid needs to be needs to enter the territory unhindered and in uh, substantive quantities, kneecapping basically UNRWA uh, by pulling off the plug by defunding it would make that order of the ICJ impossible to achieve because there is simply no other organization that can take its place or assume its responsibilities. UNRWA now is the lifeline of the entire yeah. population in Gaza. It feeds them, it hosts them, it provides them with uh, um, um, uh, some medical relief, and it provides them with tents and, and the supply of water that they need to stay alive. Yeah, again, those allegations are indeed very serious, and we have to see what the result of the investigation um, will be. And we should also add Norway and Ireland have said they will continue funding for UNRWA. And Spain. Nor Ode and Spain, thank you. Yeah. Nor Ode joining us from Ramallah in the West Bank. Thank you.